Hey, my dear students. Um, hope you are doing good in your home. Um, this class is uh, dealing with the one credit course, Wireshark. Um, we have already um, um, seen three, uh, I mean, five experiments um, that is related to the Wireshark. The first experiment is a study experiment. Second one is actually ICMP protocol analysis. Third one is TCP analysis, fourth one is uh, DHCP analysis. These four experiments we have seen in the class itself, I mean in the lab itself. The fifth, fifth experiment is actually address resolution protocol analysis, ERP analysis. And uh, I have given the procedures and the cousins uh, as a lab manual and I have already um, completed the working principle of our address resolution protocol in the class itself. Uh, so I have given as a home assignment for you. Hope um, everyone complete, completed. So far, uh, I have received uh, nearly 20 to 25 students uh, mm, completed this uh, fifth experiment, I mean the ARP uh, uh, analysis. And I have also uh, received the reports from the student mentors of my uh, one credit to Wireshark uh, lab. Um, hope I'm expecting um, all the students completing this uh, remaining uh, experiment, say for uh, say DHCP and um, test resolution protocol analysis uh, within a short period of time. Okay, so today uh, we will see uh, three experiments um, related to this one today course Wireshark. The first experiment is uh, customizing the work Wireshark, mm, enhancing, this will help to enhance the column display uh, this will help to enhance uh, the interface, the Wireshark interface more understandable. So this is the first experiment we are going to see in this video. The second one is actually HTTP protocol analysis. This is what we have missed uh, in our lab um, due to limited time period. We have been missing this protocol analysis. Uh, this mainly includes the get response interaction um, between the client and the server. So I will tell you the basic thing about HTTP protocol and how this um, get uh, method is actually implemented while we have been using this HTTP protocol. Uh, so everything I will tell you what are the basics behind this thing, uh, everything I will uh, explain this explain in this video. Uh, and I will give the procedure and the questions for uh, uh, I mean implementing this experiment. Um, uh, so this second experiment you are going to do as a um, home assignment again. Uh, the first and the third experiment I am going to explain uh, from the top to the bottom in this video. Uh, the customizing the Wireshark and the ma uh, malware traffic analysis using Wireshark. So you are going to do uh, by your own the second experiment HTTP protocol analysis. So it's a very simple experiment. I will tell you the basic, again I am telling you, I will tell you the basic thing behind this HTTP protocol, how the interaction, the get interaction is happening between the uh, client and the server, everything I will tell you in this video. Uh, and I will give you the cousins and I will give you the procedures how to do, how to uh, implement this experiment. You can do by your own. If anything, if any clarification you need, you ping uh, to my mobile or uh, to my email. Okay, the third experiment uh, <coughs> actually dealing with the cyber security related experiment. Uh, this is the only one experiment in the Wireshark one credit course which is dealing with the cyber security. We are going to analyze the malicious traffic um, which has been created uh, um, previously uh, and uh, we are going to analyze that traffic. Um, I will tell you, I will tell you um, how to analyze this malicious traffic um, with some procedures and all. So the first experiment I, I'm going to deal with here is the customizing the Wireshark. So we have studied so far the basic how uh, the Wireshark will work, where we have to uh, get the capture, I mean uh, the traffic capture in the wire, uh, from uh, with the help of Wireshark and how to analyze this uh, traffic uh, using the Wireshark and what are all the three sections present in the Wireshark's. Hope you remember what are all the three sections in the Wireshark. Anyhow, I will uh, um, give a recall of uh, Wireshark, how it will work in 
what are all the three section present in the wire shark everything i will tell you um, <clears throat> so you all know right uh, while opening the wire shark like this um, it will show the interfaces which is present uh, in, uh, in our system so um, these are all the interfaces which is present in my systems if i am clicking some interface say for example if i am uh, accessing wi-fi uh, then uh, if I am clicking this Wi-Fi interface, then the captures actually getting in and out of this Wi-Fi interfa interface is getting, uh, the traffic is getting captured. So this is one kind of uh, capturing the Wireshark, I mean capturing the traffic. Um, so if I am clicking Wi-Fi uh, wi interfaces, I am getting three sections here. The first two sections will, uh, will give the details about the packets have been captured and the second sections will give the uh, details of uh, each and every individual packets is getting uh, uh, captured and third one is actually the raw data so this is how the wireshark will work you all know right so here uh, so we have not yet seen uh, so this video the first experiment is actually customizing the wireshark so i'm going to enhance the column display in my wireshark displays nothing but this is the columns so conventionally if I am opening a Wireshark the columns may be uh, the first column may be the number of the uh, segment what I have captured the second column is actually the time the source the destination the protocol every segment used the length and the information so this is the conventional thing which is which is uh, which is already there in the wireshark when i'm uh, capturing any packets in the uh, traffic so in this experiment i'm going to customize the wireshark itself uh, so that um, it will give a more uh, uh, understandable interface uh, for doing uh, um, the traffic analysis in depth so this uh, experiment will cover the following areas say for example uh, um, web traffic and the default wireshark column display how we are going we are going to do uh, i mean uh, uh, differ it with the uh, default wireshark column display with the enhanced column display and the hiding columns and uh, how i'm going to remove the columns and how i'm going to adding the columns how i'm going to change the format of the date which is present in present here in uh, wireshark this is the time right so i'm going to change the format of this time here so and then customize the columns say for example i'm going to uh, i mean alter uh, uh, which column should come first and which column should come second and what sh what column should come at the last i'm going to i'm going to modify everything so this is the thing uh, i'm going to i'm going to deal with this experiment say for example uh, for uh, in my daily work uh, if i if i require the following columns in my wire shark say for example the first column should be the date and time in utc utc is nothing but a universal time clock and the second thing is uh, source ip and source port number this uh, uh, i mean first column this is the first column second third and fourth column might be the destination port and fifth column might be the destination uh, sorry uh, destination port uh, ip address and the destination port number and then has http host as the next column has http server as the next uh, and the next column and finally the info so this is the order i want to arrange my columns in wireshark so that it will enhance my um, enhance the interface more understandable uh, to do my uh, analysis traffic analysis uh, uh, in a very easier way uh, so i am opening here the wireshark uh, application um i'm going to open i'm going to open a pre-recorded uh, um, uh, packet capturing file uh, since this file i have downloaded from uh, malware uh, um, some malware um, analysis website uh, wireshark analysis website uh, it is a pre-recorded uh, packet capturing file i'm going to send this uh, uh, I mean packet capturing uh, file to all of you uh, for doing this uh, same experiment so um, rather than uh, uh, opening an interface and analyzing the real traffic I here in this experiment I am going to uh, analyze the pre-recorded uh, packet captured file so I am uh, so go to go to your file in Wireshark and uh, click open and uh, select the I mean uh, the location where I have saved the pre-recorded packet capturing file. So this file again I am saying I am going to send it to you all. So select this file and click open. So continue without saving. 
so this is the thing actually um, getting uploaded in the pre-recorded packet capture so in this um, experiment customizing the wireshark uh, wireshark uh, to enhance the um, interface more understandable um, i'm going to uh, remove the packet number first and also the length uh, length uh, i mean the length column in wireshark so the, this, this is the first thing i'm going to uh, do in initially so for that you just right click uh, the tab here and um, just uncheck the number which will remove the column and also again you just right click the tab and uh, remove the i mean uncheck the uh, length option it will remove the uh, i mean length column also so this is the first thing i am doing here so i am removing the packet number and length so <clears throat> so i have removed uh, two columns here the first one is the number and then the second one is the length of uh, each segment i have removed um, second thing is i am going to change the time format here so for that i am going here to view uh, in the view menu there is a option called time display format you change the time display format into utc date and the time of the day so now you can see here uh, uh, that um, the date uh, will come first and then the time will come first time uh, will come uh, next to the date so after that we are having um, source IP address and the destination IP address and the protocol uh, used for uh, each and every segments and then the informations now, uh, now I want to include a column called source port number and a destination port number so for that uh, inclusion of source port number and destination port number column you right click here and uh, go to column preference so in that column preference um, you click this uh, uh, plus sign uh, which will add a new column and after clicking this uh, i mean um, after selecting this um, new column you change your uh, uh, i mean you give your name for your uh, column say for example i am giving here a source port number that that is going to display the source port number so i am going to select source port so now again i am adding an another column and i am changing my uh, column name it should display like uh, dst port um, <clears throat> so and also it has to display the destination port destination port so select the destination port so um, if i am clicking ok if i am entering it i may see this here at the last so a column has been included with the source port number and a destination port number so this is how we can include a column say for example source port number and the destination. okay after inclusion of this two columns say for example source port number and the destination port number i want to move this column next to this source ip address and the destination ip address for that uh, again i have to click here and go to column preference and i can i can i can select this um, column and i can move it like here so after a uh, destination port number the destination ip address i will uh, i will get my source port number and similarly i am moving the destination port uh, port number after the source port number and if i am clicking uh, ok button so the source port number and the destination port number will come after the source address and the destination address so, so it a kind it's, it's a kind of enhancing the view of wireshark so the source port number and destination port number will come next to the source address and the destination address ip address and also there is an um, align uh, aligning of the data which is present in the column so if i am right clicking a particular column and if i am clicking align center the data will get aligned at the center itself so this is how we can uh, include the column remove the column and uh, we can um, align the data within the column also right so the next thing is what we are going to see is uh, protocol hierarchy for that you have to select the statistics menu uh, the third option is a protocol hierarchy 
So this is a very important uh, statistics which will uh, give a summary of uh, all the protocols which is involved in the capture itself. So <clears throat> uh, internet protocol version 6, this will cover up to 0.7 percentage of this, set, but of this uh, consolidated traffic. And IP version 4, this will, uh, this will uh, I mean, um, accommodate nearly 98.7 percentage uh, when we have been dealing with this, all, uh, when I have been dealing with all this uh, traffic. So I'm going to move, uh, I'm going to, uh, I mean, um, so here I'm going to concentrate on uh, IP version 4, uh, IP version, uh, 4 uh, part since it uh, accommodate nearly 98.7 I mean uh, the most of the traffic it has been uh, uh, accommodate so I'm going to concentrate here the IP version 4 protocol so this includes uh, the subheadings again uh, user datagram UTP protocol and the transmission control protocol and the hypertext transfer protocol under uh, transmission control protocol I'm having uh, hypertext transfer uh, protocol HTTP protocol um, so for this um, i'm going to so i'm going to apply a filter uh, which includes http alone so <clears throat> so this is http hypertext transfer protocol uh, here itself i am right clicking this hypertext transfer protocols and um, selecting apply as filter and uh, getting uh, selected and you can see in the background of Fireshark, uh, the HTTP filter has been applied here. So the data what we are actually need for analysis has been um, scrutinized here. Uh, so this is how we can, um, I mean, apply the filter with the help of uh, protocol hierarchy. So, um, so these are all the hierarchies what we have uh, seen so far. Yeah. Um, so next thing is uh, the second experiment we are going so the second experiment is actually the http protocol analysis the basic http response interactions how it is actually happening between the client and the server is what we are going to uh, dealing with here so you all know right what is mean by http hypertext transfer protocol it is actually a protocol designed to enable the communication between the client and the server. So it will enable the communication between my system towards the server. Uh, if I am opening a browser and if I am typing some domain name, say for example, if I am, uh, if I am typing some, uh, say for example, um, facebook.com. Facebook.com, if I am typing as a domain name, I, I, I mean an URL in a web browser, it will retrieve some data. So these are all the data. These are all the data retrieved from the Facebook server. How this data has been retrieved with the help of this HTTP protocol, it will first establish a connection between the client and the server. So it will design to enable a communication between the client and the server. So HTTP works as a request responsible protocol. Uh, it includes the request and it also includes the response between the client and the uh, server. Say for example a web browser may be a client and an application on a computer that hosts a website may be a server as, as I have shown as an example. So for instance a client or a browser submits an HTTP request to the server. Say for example if I am opening a browser and typing some facebook.com. So it, uh, which means that I am submitting an HTTP request to the server. Then the server returns a response to the client. So this response contains the status information about the request and may also contains the requested content. So what are all the con uh, content what I have requested has been retrieved from the server. So the main part is in the HTTP protocol is HTTP methods. It includes uh, two methods, the get method and the post method. So get method is nothing but it is used, it is a method used to request the data from a specified resources. So if I am opening a browser and typing something say for example uh, um, uh, facebook.com, uh, it, will, it, will, it, will, it, will, it will retrieve some data from the source. So that, uh, that's what actually the get method is used for. So get method is used to request the data from a specified resource. Here the resource is our, the server. The second one, the second method is the post method. The post method is a method 
used to send the data to a server to create or update a resource. So you, are, you all know right while dealing with the TCP analysis we have seen this post method. Um, what we have done in uh, TCP analysis, we have posted some text document uh, in, in a particular uh, server and we have analyzed the communication between the client and the server. So for that, for posting the data, for, uh, for uploading the data, this post method has been used. So post is a method used to send the data to the server. So, um, with the same uh, traffic analysis with the same uh, packet capturing file we can uh, we can analyze the http also so how you have been uh, applying the filter with the help of a protocol hierarchy statics just uh, by right clicking the um, i mean uh, protocol what you are actually need to analyze and click apply as a filter and selected if i am doing this thing the http will be I mean HTTP related segments has been retrieved in this uh, uh, I mean uh, uh, Wireshark. So say for example we have been dealing fully with the um, I mean um, get response interaction. So for get response interactions you have to give an another command called dot HTTP dot request. So if I am uh, giving this filter and uh, uh, giving this filter it will uh, really filter uh, the client uh, I mean the source and the server and the destination the source and the destination um, get response interactions will be filtered here so how to open a protocol uh, hierarchy statistics um, go to statistics and the third option is uh, protocol hierarchy here you will get um, each and every protocols which is which is been included in this uh, traffic uh, segments. So so this is how you can have to open the protocol hierarchy statistics. So so this is how we have to filter using protocol hierarchy. HTTP dot request uh, we can use this as a filter and we can uh, have the get. Um, uh, response interactions between the source and the destinations uh, finally we have narrowed down a search uh, host name as a column oh we, ha we have not yet seen the host name as a column we have include a column uh, include a column uh, uh, column in the display move the columns we have aligned the data in the column so we have seen everything um, to make a wireshark uh, more an enhanced way and a more understandable way uh, the only thing we have seen, we have not yet seen is host name as a column. We have to include uh, another column that will include the host name also. For that, uh, um, you click any segment and in that segment, you can see the protocols under the second section of the Wireshark. So in that, you click this uh, HTTP, hypertext transfer protocol. So here we can see the uh, host options. You right click this host option and go to apply as a column. So that will include the host name also. That will include the host name also. So what are all the things you have you have uh, you have been um, I mean enhanced here? Uh, the first column is the time with UTC format. The second one is the source IP address. Uh, third one is the destination IP address, source port number, or destination port number, align, right, align center. So this is the destination port number then the protocol column and we are having the host column also and finally the information so the third experiment in this video is a malicious traffic analysis so what we have opened here i mean the traffic uh, i mean packet capturing file what we have opened here is a malicious traffic it is a pre-recorded traffic we couldn't uh, uh, i mean um, do a real-time analysis in malware uh, related to mal malware analysis and hence we have a pre-recorded packet capturing file which is actually present in a public forum uh, that we have opened here uh, so this packet capture is all about uh, user downloading a malware so malware you know right malware is actually a malicious software malicious software illegal software um, or a software which is actually doing some illegal activities in your system is called actually malicious software. 
so say for example it may be a virus it may be a worm it may, it may be a, a spyware it may be a drosan whatever it may be it is called actually a malware so this packet um, uh, capture is actually uh, all about uh, user is actually downloading uh, a malware say for example uh, user is accessing some website and that website may contain a malware and while accessing the user accessing that uh, website that uh, particular malware is getting downloaded into that system at that time this packet has been captured and that packet has been packet capture has been opened here for analysis so the questions you have to answer here for this experiment malicious traffic analysis is nothing but on uh, for uh, uh, six questions the first question is what is or are the infected files downloaded and their hashes so you are going to retrieve the files that has been downloaded with the help of this uh, packet capture itself so how you are going to download this uh, malicious file with the help of this uh, packet capture so it's a very simple thing um, you go to file and there is an option called export objects right and you have to select the http uh, traffic so a window will open uh, that will uh, that will have the content of uh, export list http object list so so this uh, http object list will list the i mean the packet the host name the content type and the size of the particular files which has been included in this traffic and the file name so these are all the uh, details we can retrieve from this uh, i mean option um, <clears throat> so you can um, sort with the help of uh, content type that will give a clear um, view of different files um, which is uh, been uh, um, used in this traffic so the first one is say for ex example it's a java file and second one is also a java file third one is actually an executable file microsoft download executable file fourth one is also executable file fifth one is also an executable file sixth one is actually a flash file and then last one is also a flash file say for example i am going to download this some three files out of uh, this uh, one two three four four seven files i am going to download the uh, three files for analysis the first file i am going here i am saving here and go to desktop select a folder rename it as a java1 java1 file so i am saving this file and also i am downloading the third file save rename it into exc1 okay so you two download this same files what i am downloading here for your experiment also and also you download uh, this file this one 2394 uh, a flash file is there right so you download this file also um i am leaving this file for you for analysis you have to do by your own i am going to um so i am going to <coughs> um, analyze the first two files itself so i am closing this object list and getting into the folder where i have downloaded these are all the two files java file i think i couldn't find my exe file and again i am opening my export http sort by content type i am downloading this exe file right yeah it has been there exe1 is there right i have i have downloaded it somewhere else so change the location exe1 save right so for analysis uh, i am I, I have to extract the i mean extract the uh, hashes of this two files so that i can analyze hashes is nothing but a signature of a particular file uh, each and every file in our system is hash um, has its own hashes h a s h e s hashes 
so i have to extract the hashes of the particular uh, files for extracting the hashes i am using a um, uh, hash my file software a tool uh, while opening this tool uh, and i am selecting this uh, two files dragging into this application so this will give my hash so md5 uh, message digest algorithm this is an algorithm used for uh, i mean um, uh, constructing this file so this is this is a hash and this is also an another hash exe1 is a first file uh, java1 is my first file and the hash is starting with 1e3 and exe1 is an another file and its hash is starting with d2765 so you keep this hash there and I am going to analyze with the help of a tool, another tool called Wireshark. So Wireshark, sorry, Wireshark, uh, Virus Total. So Virus Total is um, a web platform where it consists of um, number of uh, AV engines, antivirus engines is, is there. Uh, that will help you to analyze whether that downloaded file from this uh, uh, traffic is actually a malicious or not. For that you have to copy the um, hashes. So first I am copying the exe file, uh, sorry java file hash, copy md5 and I am clicking the searching menu. So it, here you can see the url, ip address, domain or file hash. So I am pasting the hash and I click and clicking search so that file is actually a malicious file you can see each and every search I mean antivirus engine is telling that it is actually a um, malicious file say for example Sophos antivirus is telling that it is actually a mal x by java af file uh, komodo antivirus is also telling it is a malware uh, Bitdefender is again telling it is a malware. Kaspersky is telling it is actually a, an exploit malware. McAfee is telling it is actually an exploit malware. Microsoft is also telling that it is actually a exploit malware. So most of that, uh, I mean, uh, antivirus engines are scanning that hash files and to, uh, telling that it is actually a, a malicious file. So I am noting that it is a malicious file and again i'm clicking this um, exe file copy md5 and getting back and pasting the same hash file um, you can you can search the virus total with the help of hash file also also you can upload this file uh, by clicking this choose file and browse and you get into that location and select that file and you can upload the file also so better don't upload any file you you find the hash and you can search it for uh, search it in the virus total so i am searching the hash file uh, second hash file exe file it is telling like it is undetected most of every every search i mean antivirus engine is uh, telling that it is undetected maybe a clean file or maybe a zero day uh, attack file so what is the first question in the malicious traffic analysis so what is what are the infected files downloaded and their hashes so you create a top a tabular column here uh, with um, I mean uh, three rows the first one is the file name file name second one is their hashes um, and third one is infected So you write the file name here my file name is java1 so the I mean the hash um, the hash is nothing but for my java file you copy the md5 and paste it here so this is my hash whether it is infected or not it is infected right this is the first file we have seen with the help of this virus total the second file is actually exe1 exe1 the hash of this exe1 is right click copy md5 and paste it here whether it is infected or not it is not actually with respect to the virus total with respect to the virus total it is not getting infected maybe a zero day file also right this is how you have to answer the first question so what are the infected files downloaded and their hashes so this is the answer for you 
and what is the second uh, question what are what are, what is the url or domain name of the compromised website that has been delivered that malware so we have been delivered with the malware right we have identified that uh, uh, i mean um, malware also with the help of file export objects http so these are all the malwares downloaded within this traffic right while accessing a particular uh, domain name so we have to find out that particular domain name what is my what is the uh, what is the domain name uh, which is actually a compromised website a compromised server where i have uh, um, i am getting my malicious file so these are all the files getting downloaded uh, in this traffic so uh, with respect to these files what are all the domain name i mean host name we have to search so what is this stand dot trust and property dot com is this uh, is the host name uh, it is actually the compromised host uh, domain name uh, so this is might be the answer for the second question so what is the url domain name of the compromised website that delivered the mal malware Sh so for sure uh, pretty sure it, this is the domain name where i'm getting my uh, getting the i mean uh, infected files to my system uh, according to this uh, traffic uh, traffic so <clears throat> so how to retrieve that uh, domain name is by going to that particular uh, selecting the particular segment go to hypertext transfer protocol in the next section and there is a host option is there right click and copy as a value you copy as a value and you paste it here like this right like this so this is your answer for the second question and what is the answer for the third question what is the question here what is the ip address of the compromised website that delivered the malware so they have been asking the ip address of the compromised website again they have been dealing with the server server related question so what is the ip address of the compromised website that delivered the malware we have found out the compromised host name i mean domain name the server name now we are going to find out the ip address of that particular domain name for that you can uh, go to that same thing and um, you expand the internet protocol version here you can find the source address and a destination address so this is the source ip address i mean destination ip address destination ip address is your uh, website address so right click the destination ip, IP address uh, destination ip address go to copy and copy as a value and you paste it here you can paste it here so this is your right ip address of the compromised website that delivered the malware so what is the <coughs> next question fourth question what is the ip address of the windows host that gets infected what is the ip address of the windows host uh, windows host that gets infected they have been asking the victim system so i am going to retrieve the ip address of the victim system so similarly you can uh, search within this internet protocol version uh, the only thing is you have to select this segments which is which consists of this host name that stand or trust and uh, probatareality.com so in that particular segment you have to select the internet protocol and there is a source so this is my victim machine ip address copy value right i am pasting here my this is my <coughs> um ip address of my victim systems so the Next question is what is the MAC address of the infected host? What is the MAC address of the infected host? For that, for that, I have to go for in the same segment, I have to go for data link layer, I mean Ethernet. So they have been asking the question what is the MAC address of the infected host? Again, the victim host. Victim host they have been asking so obviously it is actually the source source mac address so copy value right so this is my mac address of of the infected system i mean the victim system 
what is the last question here what is the host name of the host name of the windows host that gets infected they have been asking the victim host host name the host name of the victim so how we can find the host name of the victim so for that uh, for that again you go to statistics and protocol hierarchy so in that protocol hierarchy we can find out the Mm. yeah internet protocol version is there transmission control protocol under transmission control protocol um, I mean hypertext transfer protocol is there so what are all the other protocols so in the statistics protocol hierarchy statistics uh, we are having a hierarchy of protocols uh, mm, internet protocol under internet protocol version 4 we are having two section subcategory user UDP and a transmission control protocol under UDP we can see a dynamic host configuration protocol and domain name systems what are all the protocol what are all the protocols um, that uses a broadcasting mechanisms that will include this UDP protocol uh, similarly if I am using uh, uh, if I if I am in need of a reliable transmission then it will use a transmission control protocol so <coughs> So for answering the last question, uh, what is the host name of the victim machine? Um, you can select that uh, same segment uh, that consists of the host name stand.trust and uh, probatreality.com uh, any one of that segment um, and go to I mean um, you filter it with uh, DHCP filter it with the DHCP filter it with the DHCP it with the DHCP and you select a DHCP request segment and um, DHCP request segment uh, we have already do an, uh, did an analysis on DHCP protocol dynamic host configuration protocol where it will uh, send a request to the destination to get an IP address for that particular system so similarly this victim system also uh, try to get uh, IP address for uh, for uh, for uh, for that particular system from a DHCP server. So you can uh, you can go for this uh, DHCP request. In that DHCP request, under the next section of Wireshark, uh, there is a DHCP dynamic host configuration protocol request field is there. While expanding this thing, um, you can see the option called host name and in that host name you can see the computer name I mean the victim host name so you copy as a value this is actually the particular victim host name so you can paste it here so this is how you have to answer this as six questions it is a very simple thing uh, again I am going to recall everything so here uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to open a packet capture which has been already pre-recorded with the malicious traffic right so this is what I'm going to open so this is my uh, pre-recorded traffic which consists of malicious traffic also right um, I'm going to include some column I'm going to remove some column I'm going to modify some format of a particular column I'm going to uh, shift my column from the back towards uh, the front so everything uh, everything I have done for uh, enhancing the um, view of the Wireshark I mean the interface of the Wireshark so that I can go for the next in-depth analysis of the particular traffic what I have been opened here so this is the first experiment we have seen with the help of uh, I mean uh, HTTP uh, dot request I can be able to filter all the HTTP uh, um, get response interactions so with this uh, filter you can easily analyze the second experiment called um, uh, HTTP get basic get response interactions so this experiments you can do with this filter itself so first experiment is over customizing the wireshark enhancing the column display 
so I have I have shown what are all the different options, the different features are there in the Wireshark to uh, enhance uh, the interface of the Wireshark in a more understandable way. So I have uh, shown everything related to this. I am going to post the cousins and uh, and I am going to create the uh, we are going to create the uh, lab manual for you and uh, you are going to answer the questions for that particular lab manual and the second experiment is is purely a yeah, um, home assignment for you http protocol analysis so that includes the http dot request filter also and http get http get is there http post is there everything is there i have that is the basic thing for that particular second experiment so again we are going to post the lab manual and um, cousins uh, for you and you are going to do your analysis on http protocol by your own and you are going to uh, answer the cousins what we are actually going to post in the lab manual the third experiment is nothing but the malicious traffic analysis using wireshark so this is a very important experiment only one experiment which is related purely related to the uh, cyber security where you are going to um, where you are going to find the ioc so this this part we have missed i think so ioc ioc is nothing but indication of compromise uh, indication of compromise means um, it is a part or element that indicates that my system is compromised say for example what we have seen here is a compromised ip address compromised domain name so uh, that 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 shows uh, say for example if i am uh, going for file and export uh, http it shows the content of the malicious uh, file that has been downloaded from this uh, traffic also so this are all the things which is called a indication of compromise indication of compromise is nothing but element that indicates that my system is compromised so that is actually indication of compromise ioc so this is are all the events happening in the network that is actually indication of compromise we can collect this indication of compromise during our traffic analysis what we have done so far so ioc is nothing but the pieces of forensic data that we have collected during our analysis and cyber in investigations so the piece of forensic data or the element uh, we can call are all the ip addresses domain name host name user agent file hashes specific pattern if there is anything if there are any exists say for uh, instance in our analysis ip address is uh, spreading the malware to our network right to our network and also uh, through this ip address uh, the malicious file is getting actually downloaded so then we have to immediately block the same ip address so ip address in our analysis is a indication of compromise ioc and i am identifying that particular ioc that is ip address so if i am telling this ip address is doing this thing if i am telling to the system admin he will block the same ip address and similarly finding the domain name during the investigation and blocking the same if i am blocking the domain name that domain name what domain name is called stand or trust and probabilityreality.com if this domain name is doing some malicious activities during investigations and blocking that same domain name would help to prevent an organization from an attack so this is how the indication of compromise have been identified through the traffic analysis so in this experiment we have removed some columns add some columns dealing with the protocol hierarchy we have studied ip tcp tcp is nothing but uh, web activity related information like http udp uses the machine related information like dhcp dns requests so we have also um, implement a filter using a protocol hierarchy http dot request a filter uh, get request from the source to the destinations we have narrowed down and uh, we have narrowed down the search post name as a column include a column display move the columns align the data in the column everything we have seen for enhancing the wireshark interface becoming more understandable so for um, uh, malicious traffic analysis we have answered this question um, again i am saying this is not a real time traffic what we have done so far in the past four experiments uh, this is actually a pre-recorded packet capturing file which is there in my system and I am going to share that file. So this is the file, pcapture file. 
So with this file, uh, you are going to do the analysis and you are going to answer the question for uh, two experiments. What are all the two experiments you are going to answer? The first experiment, customizing the Wireshark, enhancing the column display and the malicious traffic analysis using Wireshark. For this HTTP protocol, the basic get and response interactions you are going to do by your own with the help of the procedures what I am going to post in as a lab manual to you. Right? So hope you understand all these three experiments. So the first and the third experiments I have clearly explained the from the top towards the bottom and the second experiment you are going to do as a home assignment. Right? Hope you enjoy this class and uh, uh, we'll see you in the next class. Thank you.